Tell me how you got into Bitcoin. <sighs> so my Bitcoin store, I think everyone has like some sort of like, sure. so like, uh, how'd you get into Bitcoin? Cause it's like, <laughs> I feel weird. Like, like if, if someone's not into crypto, then I, it's like, it's, it's like asking someone if they smoke. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, yo, <laughs> like, for, like bear with me, bear with me. It's like, it's like you're at a party and like, yo, you smoke? And like, nah, I don't smoke. Like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then someone's like, oh, you smoke? It's like, yes. Yeah, oh, that's bad. Like, yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Now you, got, you know you're, you're best friend. Exactly. Also, yeah. So I, I, I use that analogy with Bitcoin. It's like, yo, are you into crypto? And they're like, nah, then like, there's really nothing to talk about <laughs> because they're like, this guy's crazy, like whatever. But if, if someone's like, yeah, like I'm into crypto, it's like, oh, bet. So like, what are you invested in? Yeah. Yeah. And having those type of conversations in social settings has become a norm now. Yeah. So like, you asked me how I got into crypto. I was at a party. Uh, with a bunch of high, uh, a, 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 I was at a party with a bunch of my friends from college, yeah. and um, one of these kids that I knew was into crypto just because, yeah. uh, like, word of mouth, he had quit his job, he had yeah. gotten into crypto at the ground yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. So I go oh, up to him. Yeah, it was one of those. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, you, you into crypto? And he's like, <laughs> he just he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm into crypto. You into crypto? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And then like, he was like, he thought yeah. I was like messing with him because like up, everyone up. jokes with him yeah, and yeah. no one takes it serious. Yeah, but we sat down and talked for like three hours and he talked yeah. about his account he had, how he traded, how he leveraged, bought X, Y, Z and talked about altcoins. Like we went through the whole Jeez. gamut. Like so, I got so. a crash course that night. And like by the end of the night, I'm like, yo, we gotta, I, I didn't have my ID at the time and you need your ID to set Just up, set up, the trade really account set up your trade yeah. account. I'm like, yo, yeah. like, how do we do this? He's like, yo, calm down. Like, it'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I'm texting him like, yo, Bitcoin just went up a thousand. Like I'm out, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need to, uh, I'm, I'm out in a sense of like, I'm out of potential gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, so trust I'm me, like, we all played the speculation. You know what I mean? So, so, so I'm like, and then like when I finally got set up on the account, Bitcoin was up $5,000. I'm like, bro, like yes. I'm losing money. Like we need to get in there now. And, um, you know, as, as, as people who are invested, you know, yeah, that yeah. it, it's, oh, it's going to be evolved. Yeah, it has yeah, to flow. It's, it's, it's crazy. Cause like everybody has those sort of aha moments, right? Like, cause like to your point, like even the first time that like, we all chatted crypto, it was one of those like, Oh my God, like he's one of us type right, of moments, right? Right, right. Because sure. like you just feel like such an outsider. Like, I mean, he got laughed at. Nah, like, hey, trust me. I was in the league <laughs> yeah. getting laughed at yeah. since 2017. It was not fun. So yeah. like, you know, when you when you find somebody, especially obviously like, you know, on on that same type of level, wavelength, all that stuff, and I'm like, you know, yeah, you in you in the crypto, you in right, exactly. Bitcoin, all coin, where you at with right, it's, exactly. It's you like, yeah, bro. I'm like, oh, it's, it's my crazy God. though, because right. you you just talk about the random things, right? Like you talk about like life, right? Like went to go buy a car the other day, and I the fact that like I had to go to the bank and the bank was closed, and the bank's just closed, right? right. Like that's a problem, right? But at the same time, like I should be able to you know send you money as easy as a text message, right? And like people don't understand that because it's just like so incomprehensible, right? And like the way that we've lived our lives. So it's like whenever you find somebody that's on the same wave, then it's like oh, like now we're talking, right? Right. Like, stuff like that. So like it's uh we have a slightly more condensed podcast. So I'm actually gonna ask you a question too. Um, you know, when we look at when we look at crypto. Obviously, we we've all gotten into that, but we also have kind of previous investing careers. I know yours is real estate. You were on Wall Street, with a lot of people probably don't know. Yeah. So, could you guys compare those industries? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, I think from my side of things, you know, Wall Street and, and legacy markets and, and things like that is just so you know by the book, right? Like yeah. everything is by the book. So, like when you even think about crypto, it's like you know, people at investment banks obviously have resources to everything. Right. So like we've been known about the technology for a long period of time, but it wasn't until you brought it to me that it was something I really took as serious. Right. Yeah. And so like when you just think about these things and you have this by the book world, probably, you know, somewhat legacy real estate is like that, too, in a way, which, by the way, there's so much impact that like crypto and blockchain technology can do to affect that world as well. So we'll probably get into that at some point. But it's it's one of those things where like you're looked at as that weird guy, like yeah. in, a, in a sense, like you looked at it as crazy. You're like, oh, do you really believe that the banking system shouldn't exist as structured? Like <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Like, right. People are going to look at you some type of way. And so it's it, it's quite crazy like that. And I think that's probably what kept me out of it personally longer than I needed to. But then it, I kept seeing it over and over again, like all these different reasons. Right. Like why should digital you know, collectibles not be a thing? Like, how can you make this easier? Yeah. Like, how can you verify these things a lot easier? And how can you have a trustless trust layer? And like, how can you how can you have a society built around that, right? right yeah. And so it's just, you know, from my perspective, it was eye-opening to so many degrees. I think Sol brought up an interesting point. So like yeah. when you said, when when you said that I didn't take it serious until Spencer brought it to you, I think that's a representation of where we're at for the next generation. Because yeah. um for the students that we work with, uh, you know, I work with underprivileged youth in New York yeah. City. Yep. Uh, a lot of them hadn't heard about crypto until rappers are talking about it for sure yeah and 
I, it's it, it, the fact that that's the trickle down is what it is, but it's it's a step in the right direction that people in their communities are talking yeah. about things that they need to be invested in. And even more so on that point, you took it serious when Spencer brought it to you because you respect Spencer. And as people of color who were talking about something and trying to be trailblazers in an industry yeah. that, you know, we're not yeah. going to get a lot of respect from, it's not until you have a Paul Tudor Jones, who's yeah, one of the biggest sure. hedge fund managers yeah, in the world, yeah, saying that you need to have a 5% allocation of your assets sure. in Bitcoin, or that's the position he's going to take. Yeah. And 5% and of he's billions, billions is a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, like, are you like, like, why are you taking it serious when it's coming from him when Spencer's been talking about it since? Yeah, I mean, I think it's crazy because if you think about it, it's kind of like allegorical in a way because you just think about how like, you know, in a society, like we trust things like it's very hard yeah. for us to not trust, th like not to be able to point to some entity or person and trust them. Right. Like yeah. that's just like a luxury that you have in the developed world. Right. But I can tell you right now, you go back to, you know, West Africa, or you go back to these other countries and some of these of the undeveloped world in some ways. And like, there's tons of applications for like this technology. Right. Like, cause you don't, and like those people tend to be like Nigeria is like, second largest trader of crypto, right? Like right. they're big yeah. in the crypto, right? right? And obviously you have those, you know, you're, you're Nigerian as well. And so right. like, I think from that perspective, you just see like, you know, how like it takes that time, that right? Sense. Before people start to like really <laughs> engage into the technology. And so like, it's, it's just crazy in that way. Cause we just have grown in society where we trust things, right? And, and it's hard to not trust this yeah. identifiable thing. Cause the blockchain's not that, right? Like right. it's everybody.